on a stream of Kaya Summer Love is War Season 2. Are we good to go? But it sounds a bit we actually are. So yeah, this is going to be a little bit weird because currently I'm not actually streaming on on YouTube, I'm streaming on Twitch instead. It's because for some other reason, don't ask me what's going on, but YouTube keeps my video in processing for 12 hours. Like, every single stream I've done bar maybe four of them, because for some reason they get through, I have no idea how it happens. Now most of the other ones get stuck in processing for at least 12 hours. And I have zero idea whether or not anyone actually can see them because, let's face it, YouTube's a bit weird when it comes to that kind of thing. So to avoid anything happening, I thought, well, I moved to Twitch just for a little while to actually see whether or not the actual problem just kind of subsides. Because as this whole entire year has been for me on YouTube, I have a very kind of uh, up and down kind of thing. How certainly sometimes it does free work in my favour, other times it doesn't, other times it just fixes itself and actually kind of get back to normal. So yeah, that's, that's basically the gist of what's actually going on. So you have to see me stream on Twitch more often, it's because of this reason, it's because YouTube's being a massive boob to me right now. Which is kind of basically every single day at this point, but still. So anyway, yes, we actually ha we actually are returning to actually cover episode nine of Kaya Summer Love Is War season two, and as we know, episode eight episode episode eight, episode eight actually was once again so goddamn good, very much more of a funnier episode. And actually, kind of more of like a relaxed episode, so to speak, because we as we know, we had a massive we had a massive arc previously. So actually, kind of have these have these more micro episodes actually kind of doing free. Once again, develop the characters, but also kind of give us that sense of humour. Once again, it's just kind of, it's nice. It's nice. It's the main thing. And also, the whole thing with Kaguya kind of thinking that she has something wrong with her when actually, no, she's actually just in love. It's just the icing on the cake. So anyways, she put on Twitch actually gone live. And what that one? H hate pressing Control S accidentally. Are we good to go? Yeah. Sorry, some obvious reason there. I um, hit Control S. Don't ask me why. I just had I had a random moment. Right, and leave with that. We actually are good to go. I also just realised I just I just. Uh... Oh no, I'm, I did it right. <laughs> it's one of those days. You know when anything just goes wrong for you for a second, you're like, oh no, but actually no, everything's okay. You're like, okay. Anyway. Let's, let's start this thing in three, two, one. Let's start this thing absolutely. Before I forget, I should put subtitles on. Absolutely now. I tend to forget to actually put the subtitles on. For some odd reason. Is, are, they, are they actually on? They are on. Cool. Combine wa. Genki Deska. Also, Hyrule's Amos as well. Look what you've done to Mikoino. What's happened to Mikoino? You've hurt her. Alas, the events of this whole entire anime thus far would be actually traumatizing. She keeps walking at the wrong time. <laughs> She's impeccable timing, that poor girl. Like she she would just walk in when it's just like you're just like, no, don't. Whatever you do, do not walk in then. But again, it kind of it's it's kind of, she's kinda of great because of it. Like in essence, she kind of just she has, she has no way to actually fix that whole entire thing. Like, in essence, every single time it just feels like something worse is actually happening. When well, actually it isn't, it's just a complete reverse thing of actually happening. But yeah, I mean, I like I like this. I want to say this, I say it every single week, so actually kind of pointless me saying it at this point. But I don't know. This show has a certain feel to it. It just kind of works. And I kind of. The thing with Miko and his character as well, like, I said that during the end of the stream as well, which actually, I guess is kind of confusing, but it's just, it's just also um, very kind of. Interesting that like she kind of is representing the normality. She, she actually does represent the normality in this world in a way. Like in essence, everyone else is kind of, to a certain degree, like abnormal when it comes to like what you know to be the like normal romance kind of uh, trappings. Essentially, Kaguya and Shiragane and everyone else exist outside the, like, the realms of what you know. So, so technically, Miko Ino, in a way. It's like a sense of normality in this whole entire world. So in essence, her walking in the situations is kind of like, it's not what should be happening, but it's happening. She, she, she actually just doesn't understand anything that's going on here because she exists within what is otherwise known as the normal stuff, essentially. If that makes any sense. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no, you just you bought you bought in a letterbox. Is that? Is that need a hero? Wait a minute. This isn't um This isn't this isn't a whole like I know I'm shooting a dark here. But it's Dead Ass Eight a reference to like um Oh god, what's the name of that the Sukaban series is? If anyone knows what those are. I think that's Sukaban De Decker. Those kind of shows. It has that kind of feeling to it for a second. I was like, is this, is this Suka Bon Decker? <laughs> Just so goddamn well done. Because also it kind of does feel almost like a uh, like a 90s show as well, to a certain degree. But for a second I was like, is this Sukabon Decker? But Sukabon Decker is more delinquent, isn't it? Essentially. It did not have to go this, this goddamn... Um... Did not have to go this goddamn far with this with this, with this part of the episode. <laughs> so it's really glad it's actually the hero as well in the background. This went so goddamn far with that with that with that um with that part of the episode. I can't believe it. <laughs> no, dead ass. It's actually it actually does feel like it's a reference, to, like some real freaking obscure thing. I said Suka Bong, so I'm very incredibly. Wow! <laughs> Isn't that. I know that stuff from somewhere. <laughs> oh god, my throat. <coughs> my throat. <laughs> my throat just died a second there for some reason.
<laughs> Has it just kind of created a bit more of like a problem though? I love how she's like trying to clear up every single misconception she'd ever have about creating actually more misconceptions in the process. Mika Mina tries to save herself by creating actually more problems for herself in the process. Which is basically the show in a nutshell. <laughs> I love how it's gone back to like standard definition, like, um, to actual like standard, standard definition um, asset ratio as well. I see it very often actually. This is like... <laughs> to be honest, they all just work so well together because they basically all just kind of create problems for themselves without realizing it. And it's kind of great. Best girl. But if I remember correctly, isn't isn't like the Sukuban series is all about like uh, injustice in the school, and then someone comes along and actually kind of um, one of the students comes along and actually tries to fix it. If I remember correctly, that's if I remember. So, I mean, this, this show does make, like, does make some really obscure 80s references to things. So it's not far off the mark if it actually is the case. I might be wrong, but I thought originally it might be a Sukabun kind of series reference. Hey, this is a very shaft. How big the actual place is in comparison to them when you think about it. it actually, kind of doesn't very add to the whole entire like uh, Kaga's character in a way. It's like how uh, isolated she actually doesn't really feel sometimes. 
how the how the how the show like pans the camera around the actual room it does represent how small she is in comparison to the world <laughs> this show does some really obscure references to an extent. Isn't this a, isn't this like a like a game that I vaguely know about but cannot remember the name of right now? In last we had a, we had a Dark Souls reference. So it's not far off the mark at this point, but it makes even more obscure game references at this point. Which, I guess Dark Souls not really obscure, but still. I mean, you think about it as well. It's actually the most like normal conversation actually ever probably ever had in this show thus far. So it's not, that's not a conventional like fighting game or anything like that. Like anything like that. That's that's what the hell was the word that's? But it's more it's it's more in <laughs> it's more in line with something like I don't I don't know. It seems like something I haven't seen in a very long time. I guess. Oh shit! It begins. Is that dance from Dorada, if I remember correctly? You have to realize why I say this, this this actual manga is in my top five of all time. You have to find out why.
essentially basically me during any sort of like situation that involves groups. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, the ritual thing she's been doing in the opening since episode one of season two as well. I was gonna say it, it's gonna say it, but it didn't pass my mind to say it, but now I just rem rem remembered. She does it right at the end of the of the opening. Oh no. Oh no. Eno! <laughs> she just closes the door. <laughs> I love that. She's like, oh god, this again just shuts the door. She's grown so accustomed to the whole entire, like, existence of what goes on in this world that she's kind of like, eh. That's some character development right there. That's some good character development, actually. I do love how resource situation just creates more misunderstanding in the process, though. Every single time. About to head into, like, the arc of all arcs. Bro. <laughs> oh, man. About to head into the arc. This. Oh, you're about to find out why I love this show so much. That already that I already do because oh god this show is in incredible but mm, the sports festival arc mm, it's so good but yeah I I've got to admit I like the whole Mikawino section of the whole episode but like the most 
Because essentially, it could just be any other, like... It could just be a scene between her and o- Osaragi. That's about it. Like, it, just, it could just be that. It could be a back and forth. But no, A1 Patient was, A1 Patient was directed with, like, you know what, lads? We're going to bubble beyond somehow. And actually just create, like... I don't know. That, essentially. And just... It was just... It just elevates material beyond basically where it was. Essentially, the, the manga's actually the manga's actually really goddamn good. Like it's an amazing manga, but for some obvious reasons, anime just came along and went, you know what, lads? Up to eleven. It's just like it's so good. It's so good. It's amazing how this show actually pulls us all, all always off. Like not one single moment's wasted. Every single moment has something. Every single scene just continues. It actually doesn't really feel as if it's been wasted. That's the major thing the show does really well. Like no sh- no episode no episode or any, any moment feels wasted. Every, every single thing means something. It might not mean anything at this very one stage, but it means something later on to the series. The whole thing with Miko Ino was just kind of it was progressing to a point where it just kind of hit boiling point, and then she actually, actually had to kind of just say it out loud, but in a very kind of cool way. Not in a very kind of like not in a very like oh yeah just a, just just a, just a scene between two characters no, but. Again, my my philosophy was I could have sworn this was a Sukabon kind of like series reference essentially that kind of era of like TV. If you get, if you know what if you know what I mean, essentially. I mean, I don't know how many people know what I mean. I mean, I might I'm <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a, it's a really really like underground thing I learned about like I think last year I think and I actually kind of fell in love with it. It's actually really goddamn good. But yeah, the whole Sukabon kind of thing like it, like if I remember correctly, the Sukabon thing kind of goes like there's a girl in in the school like there's, there's always some like kind of some big dude or someone that's actually kind of like evil essentially and they actually have to come along and actually kind of fix it i believe super fun deck is kind of like the main one because that series had like multiple series i think it had an ova at some point it had a couple of movies as well if i remember correctly it's a kind of it was a quintessential one as they as, as you kind of say like the power rangers are like over here when it came to like the like the genre what genre is that over here it's the kind of the superhero kind of thing as when we were kids. The same thing applies with the Superman Decca. It was, it was the quintessential one. It was the one that kind of started it all. It was the it was the actual like breakout one essentially. But yeah, it kind of felt like that a little bit. Like the music is the music as well behind it kind of accompanied it. Kind of felt like that. I was kind of like it, it just makes it makes the whole entire thing work better. It makes the whole entire event from her perspective kind of feel like yeah, essentially what she's witnessing is these characters doing kind of like things that she otherwise opposes completely but again so this sort of thing wouldn't seem to be normal in this world that's the thing that's what i was saying about mikomino's character mikomino's Miko, character represents the kind of normality slash the past essentially like she would otherwise kind of like she otherwise would like the other the show to kind of progress in a very kind of like i guess to the point like very normal to what we know originally before like i guess the turn of the century that kind of thing but as we know, as I said last week, the whole entire world and also in the romance itself has progressed to the point that it can't actually regress back to anywhere it was beforehand. So essentially, we understand this thing to be normal, but to her, it kind of feels like it's just, it's it's an attack on the whole entirety of what she knows, essentially. Which is a very valid kind of idea. She actually is kind of witnessing these characters doing very kind of like, I guess, lewd acts in a way. Though granted... 9 out of 10 times it actually isn't, because let's face it, it isn't like that at all. The only one that's kind of like more than anything she actually has that she has witnessed is the kind of the scene within the actual um, store cupboard. But before whole, that whole entire point, it was kind of very normal. Every single thing she actually witnessed was the complete reverse opposite to what she actually otherwise would know it to be. But still, it works actually kind of highlight that she is kind of like... She, she represents the normality that would otherwise ex- exist in other shows, but not in this show, because we understand to be completely out of the ordinary. Everything that happens in this show doesn't fit into the normal, as we know, kind of thing. It has a very kind of different feel, and because of that f- different feel, it works even better, I think. Like, in essence, we don't ever kind of see a very kind of conventional, very kind of, like, normal romance rom-com show. Everything everything they do exists within the normal confines of a romance romance rom-com thing but again it does something that actually kind of counteract that and actually then it kind of works even better because of it that's why i kind of like the show so much because it kind of counteracts constantly the actual genre itself but yeah that whole entire episode that whole entire whole episode actually worked really down well because of the idea of actually how they presented it presented, presented it in such a way that it kind of feels like she is literally like being isolated and isolated within this kind of world because 
of everything she actually has in Fury kind of lends this whole entire point. I like how also like she kind of did in Fury explain a lot more about her character and she how she sees certain things, actually, how she's been brought up as well. All these things do in Fury actually kind of make a very kind of very very multifaceted kind of character, very deep character. Actually, isn't so much just she exists because she's meant to be in, meant to just kind of like walk in and be like, oh no, what's going on in here? No, she's she's not that character at all. She's actually more than that. She represents she represents more than just that kind of character. She's she's actually been better because of it. But yeah, I mean the other the other side of the show of this episode actually was Ishigami's character. Ishigami's character has always been one of those characters that actually has been very very good. Essentially, he's a, he he kind of again he in a way is like the rom- I guess the romanticist like kind of character. The man that kind of like, or the character that she kind of exists to actually kind of say, oh, look at all these things, and just kind of like have that, have those moments. You know, that you kind of get in visual novels as well. The visual, the visual novel, the visual novel character actually kind of like, yeah, love is the greatest thing ever. But then he actually has those kind of moments where it kind of counteracts the whole entire idea as well. But again, we've always kind of seen, we actually always kind of seen from the outside how he truly is. This is the kind of, this is the quintessential moment you do in free get to see his perspective on a lot more things, actually how he feels in certain events. And it kind of makes him, again, much more kind of very interesting as a character. Because again, a lot of, a lot of these characters are played off, played off in a comedic manner, but there's actually a lot more going on with them that kind of makes them to seem wide, wider the way they are, essentially. Ishigami is no different. Again, that whole entire moment in in the actual kind of like in the cheerleading club, it kind of represents his his whole entire like character in a way. Like in essence, how he kind of just feels, how everyone else is having like the time of their goddamn life, and he's just kind of like like sitting there going, "What the hell am I doing here?" Again, it's very much it's something outside the comfort zone. We've all experienced that kind of idea, like kind of kind of doing something outside of what we know, and actually kind of then actually actually trying to trying out and realizing, "Oh shit, it's actually not a good idea." But again. There will be more to this whole entire uh, arc than just that, but you'll you'll see why I mean Ishigami's character, like how Ishigami is, to a degree, well, actually not to a degree, actually very certainly an amazing character. But yeah, I mean, God, this show, this show just goes above and beyond when it goes when it when it goes um, for certain events. Like it just it just does an amazing thing. I love the <laughs> I love the accompanying music as well. Like, the music itself just it it has. The music itself it also it kind of counteracts the time period as well because again, we have very like contemporary in a way ro- romantic kind of moments paired with kind of like very outlandish kind of like comedic moments, but it's paired with a very 80s soundtrack, which is kind of like it, it just it creates a juxtaposition between actually then very very kind of weird um, feeling that you don't get very often. But it shouldn't work. This should never work that well. Like in essence, soundtrack's a very important thing. That if you get wrong, it can ruin the entire the, the entire experience. But for some arbitrary reason, the way they paired the actual music with the actual world itself makes it even better. Like it just it kind of creates that whole entire like the subject feeling of like what we know originally paired with this idea of like wait a minute, why is this, why is it why is it fuck like I'm, I'm listening to listen to I need a hero right now. But then it's it's just it just it works. It's, that's the problem. It works really well because it kind of it reminds you of the past while also then advancing the genre itself at the exact same time. That's what it kind of does, doesn't very feel like. Like it's reminding you of like the old times, the ones that you know, but then counteracted with what's going on in the scene, essentially. But yeah, I mean, really, overall, this arc is going to be amazing. I've, I assure you, I've read it. It's, this arc is incredible, so be prepared. But yeah, Ishigami's character is incredible. I, I like, I like, I like him. I like him a lot. And actually, just this episode actually kind of doesn't really bring out a lot more about who he is. Actually, how he feels. Actually, how in a way, how he doesn't really act does actually kind of make him seem as if he actually doesn't really feel like an outsider in a way, which actually is very interesting as well because a lot of the time, what he says makes sense. But the way he chooses to say it, certainly sometimes in other scenes, it kind of feels like he just goes against what he should in theory be trying to trying to say in in a way. And it kind of creates more problems, which again is a kind of a massive issue in the show. Like in essence, these characters kind of, kind of doing something like that they deem to be like ordinary, but then creates like ten different pro- problems in the exact same kind of capacity. So yeah, I mean he's an he's an interesting character, and he, he actually will in theory become more interesting as time goes on. So I can't wait for you to actually see how it actually doesn't, how it actually doesn't really pan out. But yeah, 
that is me done for today. So, what you have enjoyed this whole entire stream as a whole on YouTube and doing free, leave a like because indeed it does make quite a bit. If you have enjoyed this whole entire stream as a whole on YouTube and doing free, leave a sub because indeed it does make quite a bit. If you have enjoyed this whole entire stream as a whole on YouTube and doing free, leave a follow on Twitter or Join, join, Discord, join the Discord as well, and also actually follow this um, channel as well on Twitch. You actually are watching it on Twitch as well because this would probably be the place where I stream mostly from now on because of how YouTube actually is acting right now. So you actually watch these streams live on here. So, so next time is some more Kaguya Summer Love is War season two. See you guys later.